Welcome to Virtual Wednesdays at the De Young. My name is Francesca D'Alessio, and I'm so glad you could join us tonight. Tonight's program is in support of the exhibition Uncanny Valley, Being Human in the Age of AI. We are so excited to host Matteo Pasquinelli, professor and one of the co-authors of the catalog, Beyond the Uncanny Valley, Being Human in the Age of AI. Please join me in welcoming Matteo as he explores the rich history and complexities of algorithms before the computer age, as well as its present day definitions. Take it away, Matteo. Thanks, Fran, for the introduction and for giving me this opportunity to share the lecture with you um, in San Francisco. What uh, I would like to do with you today is just to challenge the history and the perception of something abstract as uh, algorithms. Uh, today, because of computer science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence uh, dominion on our life, we think that algorithms are something abstract, something that's been recently uh, invented and dominates our life through indeed computer and devices of any sort. On the contrary, with you, I would like to uh, run, I would like to go through uh, the history of this artifact and to show how actually they are somehow ancient and they are rooted in social practices. So I would like indeed with you to try to sketch a social history of algorithm. And I would like to start from very ancient times, from this uh, ritual, that is a ritual um, that belongs to Hinduism. Um, and it's a ritual that belongs to a fascinating uh, myth of cosmogenesis from the ancient Vedas, in which it's said that the god Prajapati uh, the supreme god is shattered into pieces after creating the universe and after the birth of the world so to speak the supreme god body is found dismembered undone and the hindu devotees in the uh, so-called uh, agnikayana ritual they have to recompose the fragmented body of the god by building a fire altar according to an elaborate geometrical plan. This far altar is laid down by aligning thousands of bricks of precise shape and size that draw the profile of a falcon. Each brick is numbered and placed reciting its dedicated mantra following step-by-step -step instruction. Each layer of the altar is built on top of the previous one respecting the same Aryan shape and solving a, a logical riddle that is the key of this ancient ritual, each layer must keep the same shape and area of the contiguous ones, but a different configuration of bricks. Finally, the falcon altar must face east, prelude to a symbolic flight of a reconstructed god towards the rising sun. In this case, an example of divine reincarnation by geometric means. This ritual, the Agrikayana, is described in the Shulba Sutras, a very ancient text that uh, is dated more than 3,000 years ago, but probably recording an older tradition. And this text teaches the construction of uh, altars, of uh, buildings of any form, basically for different purposes. But what is interesting in this uh, ritual is that, that uh, it's not only a ritual to teach uh, architectural technique, but contains also some form of mathematical knowledge and precisely also techniques of approximation and incremental growth that actually are the same that are found in modern algorithm and example of calculus like the one of Leibniz and Newton. This is of course not a finding by me, but there are mathematicians like the Italian Paolo Zellini that has been stressing the complexity of this ritual, the complexity of the knowledge uh, embodied in this ritual. This ritual, by the way, was documented also by a Dutch philosopher and Indologist that's been teaching for many years in um, at Berkeley University. And uh, Fritz Stahl went to, went to India um, uh, to film this ritual because this ritual is still uh, uh, vital <laughs> living, as a living ritual is still part of the uh, Indian culture. And Fritz Stahl was um, um, interested in also mapping um, 
so to speak, artificial languages that don't belong to Western science and Western culture. Of course, this ritual uh, has not been discovered by Fritz Dahl. It's one of the most ancient rituals of humankind and still um, performed uh, today. Uh, it's been discovered by Fritz Dahl, I would say, from our Western uh, point of view. But yeah, we have to thank Fritz Dahl for having this uh, sort of uh, documentation done. But what is interesting for me is the fact that the Agni Kayana is probably one of the most ancient uh, and still existing cultural artifacts. It somehow to me looks like eternal. And at the same time is an example of what we could define um, algorithmic culture. Now, how can we call something as ancient as the Agni Kayana as an example uh, of algorithmic culture? Uh, I think, because usually we think that the algorithm belong to, um, to the latest technology that we, uh, we invented and something that belongs also to the core of uh, digital capitalism. Um, and so we think that maybe to define an ancient ritual like the Agni Kayana may sound like an act of cultural appropriation of, uh, or, of colonialism. But I think it's the opposite, because I think that claiming that abstract techniques of knowledge, abstract techniques uh, like the artificial meta languages of computer science belong only to the West, this is true an act of epistemic colonialism towards culture of other places and other time. So with you, I would like to reverse uh, this, our Western point of view and to discover the fact that abstract form of thinking and even algorithmic form of thinking belong uh, to non-Western tradition, also to other time and cultures. Um, this history, of course, uh, this history of algorithms not being invented by me. Uh, the French mathematician Jean-Luc Chabert uh, wrote a book on this. And he wrote in this book that algorithms have been around since the beginning of time and existed well before a special word that's been coined to describe them. Algorithms are simply a set of step-by-step -step instructions to be carried out quite mechanically so as to achieve some desired result. Algorithms are not confined to mathematics. The Babylonians used them for deciding points of law. Latin teachers used them to get the grammar right. And they have been used in all culture for predicting the future, for deciding medical treatment, or for preparing food. We therefore speak of recipes, rules, techniques, processes, procedures, methods, etc., using the same word to apply to different situations. The Chinese, for example, use the word shu meaning rule, process, or stratagem, both for mathematics and in martial arts. Then, in this reading, the algorithm is not, um, indeed, as I just said, the most recent and abstract computer technology, but something that we can define as a cultural technique, one that is more ancient than many tools and machines that the human mind as design. This process of historicization that I um, propose invites to consider the algorithm as something that belongs to the history of civilization in general. And together with the idea of the algorithm, we can also um, consider other abstract cultural technique, like for instance, uh, numbers, mathematics in general. Um, in a canonical quote of the debate uh, in Germany about cultural techniques, uh, Thomas Marco wrote, cultural techniques such as writing, reading, painting, making music are always older than the concepts that are generated from them. People wrote long before they conceptualized writing or alphabets. Millennia passed before pictures and statues gave rise to the concept of the image. And until today, people sing or make music without knowing anything about tones or musical notation systems. Counting two is older than the notion of numbers. And in a similar way, the historian of science, um, Lorraine Dustin, has argued um, 
that our oldest evidence for writing systems, for example, from ancient Mesopotamia and the Mediterranean, suggest that alphabets are parasitic upon numerals. Some, somewhat disappointingly, many of the early surviving texts in Sumerian and other ancient languages record not great epics like the Gilgamesh and the Iliad, but rather what sound like merchants' receipts five barrels of wine, 22 sheepskins, and so on. The earliest use of reading and writing appears to have been to keep track of calculation, mostly for commercial and administrative purposes. And once again, um, recording the harsh living condition of ancient times, again, Jean-Luc Chabert has rooted the technique of calculation into economic needs and struggle for survival. The basic arithmetic operation of the elementary school, multiplying and dividing, appear to have derived from extremely early economic needs, certainly earlier than the emergence of civilization using writing. I'm saying this, I'm collecting all this quote, indeed to mark a sort of uh, material uh, basis, material history of this abstraction that we define as mathematical abstraction or uh, the abstraction of, uh, of the algorithm. And I'd like to stress that indeed material condition of lack and surplus of resources were the true engine of numbers, mathematics, ancient procedures and algorithm. And it would suffice to remember, for instance, that the word number comes from the Latin word numerus, that originally means portion of food. So before the consolidation of mathematics and geometry, ancient civilization were already large machine of social segmentation that mark human bodies and territory with abstractions that remain and will continue to remain operative for millennia. And numbers were already component of the primitive abstract machines of social segmentation that would make human culture emerge. You can think, for instance, that the first census took place around 6,000 years ago in Mesopotamia. But um, yeah, then what happened in the, <laughs> the following uh, millennia? This is a sort of excursus, very brief, very short, through ancient uh, mathematics. But when did the algorithm enter um, yeah, our culture. Where is this, the term algorithm um, coming from? Uh, we are used to encounter this term today um, online because of the colonization of um, computers, digital devices of any sort, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and so on. The term itself, algorithm, comes from the Latinization of the name of the Persian scholar al khwarizmi that was born in the region of Khwarzam that uh, today could be located in the area of Uzbekistan. And al khwarizmi was a mathematician uh, active also uh, in the ninth century uh, in Baghdad um, that wrote important book for the history also of Western mathematics at the end. And he, he wrote specifically a tractate titled On the Calculation with Hindu Numerals that is responsible for uh, basically translating and bringing the technique of Hindu numerals that today we use, uh, everyone, uh, into the West. And these Hindu numerals, as you know, today they are sometimes also called Arabic Hindu numerals, but originally were from, they were from India. And these Hindu numerals that are the numbers that run from zero to nine, they are very practical to do mathematical operation. You have to think at that time in Europe, um, they were using the Roman numerals that are very impractical to make a mathematical operation. And basically the four uh, technique to use the Hindu numerals uh, took the term, uh, were named algorithm by the West especially. So it was uh, basically the Latin translation of al book that introduced the Latin term algorithmus and the plural algorithmi that then would be uh, translated in contemporary English as algorithms. Uh, 
Uh, but it's interesting to also to follow in the, um, the social and economic history of these techniques from India through the Middle East, the Arabic culture into the West, because it was also um, an economic history. This technique to make basically a uh, um, calculation by hand, they were adopted first by the merchants in Florence and in Venice, because they were practical, you know, to, to, for accounting reason, and also because we were able to, you know, to follow the multiplying numbers of capitals accumulating through trading. So this uh, technique, this algorithm, followed the, the trading route from the Middle East up to Florence, Venice, Paris, London, and so on. And um, this is something that, uh, yeah, is um, important to remember. And then, of course, uh, we can trace the use of the term algorithm in the modern mathematics of Leibniz. And at the end, we have the term algorithm emerging in computer science in the 20th century. Um, so, and at the end, the, the term algorithm uh, was not referring to the basic um, calculation but um, of mathematics, but mostly to step-by-step uh, -step procedure uh, to be operated um, by machines. Um, and I think so in this way, uh, in this very brief history um, of the term algorithm, I would like to um, once again propose a sort of uh, definition uh, to keep together different century of, of human civilization. Um, and so um, going through very fast, going through all these archeological findings, uh, religious rituals, and book of mathematics of the Middle Ages, I think uh, we can propose a sort of social definition of the algorithm that I have, I can comprehend uh, also the algorithms of computer science um, and artificial intelligence. And I do this as a sort of cultural, aesthetical, and political operation to disentangle uh, the algorithm as a sort of abstraction from the domain of computer science and somehow to claim it back from, um, yeah, our everyday life and also the, the life that is not the life of people that belong to um, the corporation uh, of uh, digital business of any machine learning AI business. So what is an algorithm? I mean, looking through all this ritual and example and you know, trying to keep in mind a very deep uh, history, a deep time uh, history, I'm inclined to define an algorithm in this way. First, an algorithm is an abstract diagram that emerges from the repetition of a process, from a division of labor, time, space, and social relation. It is a rule invented from below, not from above. Second, an algorithm is the division of this process into finite steps in order to perform and control it in an efficient way. And I hope you can sediment these ideas and in your mind and somehow um, can you know, help to change your perspective, your conception or misconception of what an algorithm is. Third, I would say that an algorithm is a solution to a problem, an invention that bootstraps beyond the constraint of the situation. Any algorithm is a trick. And last but not least, an algorithm is an economic process as it must employ the least amount of resources in terms of space, time, energy, and has to adapt to the limits of a given situation. So uh, to conclude, today because of computer science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, there is a tendency to perceive algorithms as an application or imposition of abstract mathematical ideas upon the world, upon the information, the data that we produce but on the contrary, I think the genealogy of the algorithm through different centuries and different civilization show that it is a form that emerged from material practices, from worldly division of space, time, labor, and social relation of any sort. So to conclude, I would say that 
it could be said that the algorithmic processes encoded into social practices and rituals were what made number and numerical technologies emerge, including computer science, not the other way around. And this is my conclusion, is basically the attempt to reverse the relation between the algorithm and our life and our body. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matteo, for that expansive talk. We greatly appreciate your insights. And thank you everyone for joining us tonight. We will see you again soon.